Caring for your collections from the Icon Care of Collections group. Whilst it's essential to be looking after your buildings, it's also important to consider what is happening on the inside. Keeping damp and moisture out will ensure that you're protecting your belongings from issues such as mold, structural changes, or water damage. Following are some top tips covering how you can care for your treasures and detailed information about caring for specific objects and materials. You don't have to deal with everything at once, as that can be too overwhelming, but consider completing a review during National Maintenance Week so you can know what you need to do over the next few months. Here are our top 11 tips for caring for your treasures. One. Regular inspection and careful cleaning is the best way to prevent damage like stains, mold, corrosion, and insects. Two, protect your valuables from light, which can cause fading and fabric weakness. Three, place your objects in a place that is neither too dry nor too damp, where the items may crack and suffer from mold. Four, if you can, Avoid areas where you might get fluctuations in temperature or relative humidity, such as near a door or a radiator, or in spaces like the attic or a basement, as this could cause your object to expand and contract, causing structural damage to things like paintings, wood, leather, and textiles. 5. Regularly check for pests like moths, carpet beetles, and mice, when you're vacuuming is a good time to be vigilant. It's good to see pest evidence early and deal with small problems immediately, as it's key to preventing an infestation. 6. Dust is an enemy. Try to protect objects from dust where practical. And remember, repeated dusting can damage fragile materials, even with a careful hand. 7. Avoid acidic fumes from sources like traffic exhaust, everyday cardboard boxes, wood, and rubber-backed materials, which can rot, embrittle, and stain nearby materials. 8. Cover the arms and backs of valuable upholstery with similar-looking fabric to protect from handling and user wear. If you're going to be away for an extended period, cover the entire upholstered area in a cotton sheet to protect from dust and light. 9. Resist the temptation to handle objects too much. It leaves marks and you can run the risk of accidental damage. 10. Lifting heavy objects is one of the most common ways to cause damage to an item or yourself. Always work in pairs. 11. Leave the repair of valuable objects to specialists, as even basic looking techniques are trickier than they might seem. Remember, safety is first. It's essential to work in a well-lit, well-ventilated room particularly when using solvent-based products. Use only minimum amount of chemicals that you need and use it from a small lidded container. Wear protective gloves and wash your hands when finished. Be sure not to touch your face or your mouth. Put used clothes outside to allow any solvent to evaporate before storing or discarding as they can combust. Store materials in sealed containers including claws with wax on them. Keep materials away from heat and light. And remember, don't rush in. Before you start any cleaning work, take a good look at your object very carefully. Avoid cleaning in areas if you see any loose surface decoration, weak joints, frayed areas, old repairs, or cracked surfaces. It might be better to ask a conservator to have a look at the item for you. Some of our tools of the trade tips. First, clean as you go. Clean brushes immediately after use and reshape bristles while drying. Replace discolored polishing and dusting cloths. Keep product containers clean to avoid contamination. Be sure to organize your materials before you start. Label everything to avoid cross-contamination, especially of metal polishes. Keep dusting cloths clean in labeled sealable bags and store brushes with bristles upright to keep their shape. 
Think about investing in the best. High quality brushes with natural bristles can last for years. And while natural bristle brushes are more expensive, they can be more efficient and so might be worth the investment. Take care with chemicals. Some of the substances you might use when caring for your objects are potentially hazardous. And please exercise great care. Keep all of your materials secure and safely out of reach of children and animals. And a few common materials that we use include abrasive paste for cleaning some hard surfaces. Choose paste without ammonia and with the finest evenly graded abrasive. For example, Prelim or Solvov Autosol that you can buy from motor accessory stores. Use acid-free or archival quality tissue paper, card and boxes from which you can buy from department stores or art supply shops. When using alcohol, such as isopropanol or propantuol, it's a very effective at removing some types of dirt. Methylated spirit is not recommended, and you can buy these products from pharmacies. Now brushes. A pony or a goat hair brush will remove dust from delicate surfaces such as silver, gilding, and lacquer. Hog's hair is better for more robust surfaces like ceramics, carved wood, and copper alloy. Chemical sponges are used dry and this picks up and absorbs or removes dirt by rubbing. You can buy these products from jewelry or silverware stores. Corrosion inhibiting bags or rolls will protect polished copper and silver from tarnishing. Cotton cloth is used for silver while intercept, a treated polythene, is used for a wide range of metals. Cotton buds of wool can be useful. Use any of the commercial varieties, but be sure that they are 100% cotton. Cotton or linen tape is especially good for tying up books. Unbleached and undyed tape is used to secure objects, and you can buy this from haberdashery departments. And finally, detergent. Be sure to use conservation grade. This must be free of color, perfume, optical brighteners, enzymes and bleach, and it should have a neutral pH at about pH 7. You can use liquid detergent for, for delicate silk and wool fabrics, which you can buy in a supermarket, as long as it's free of the previously listed ingredients. Caring for your glassware. Handling. Most damage occurs to glass when handling or washing it. So never wash up your best glasses when you're in a bad mood or if you're tired. Always remove jewellery from your hands before cleaning or handling glasses as the stones in your rings might scratch it. Pick up drinking glasses by their bellies and avoid picking up any glassware by their projecting bits as these could snap off. Cut the dust problem by completely by displaying the glass in glass cabinets. Storage. Remove decanter stoppers to prevent glass clouding, but keep the stopper nearby, perhaps securing to their object with cotton tape. Cover openings with muslin or acid-free tissue, and then use tissue hats or polythene bags to protect other stored objects from dust. In kitchen cupboards, keep similar sized glasses together so they can be taken out from the front of the shelves without any accidents. Washing instructions. If displayed on an open shelf, use a soft brush while gently vacuuming and for further protection, use a soft nozzle over the end of your vacuum cleaner to prevent from accidental knocks. Wash your antique or good quality glass or even your lead crystal glass by hand with a few drops of detergent added to the water. Do not wash painted glass as the paint may come off. And always check that enamel or gilding on decorated glass is securely held in place before washing it. Do not wash repair glass as the joints might come apart and use soft cotton buds moistened with soapy water to wipe away dirt and detergent, then using clean cotton buds and clean water. Try vinegar to, in a decanter that's gone white on the inside. Swirl it around and leave it for a few minutes before rinsing with clean warm water and allow the decanter to then drain upside down in a high-sided bowl or saucepan to prevent it from falling over before putting it away in the cupboard. Caring for stained glass. Sometimes stained glass color is applied almost like a paint to one side, the back or the underside, and may flake off very easily. 
Therefore, avoid slamming a door decorated with a stained glass panel. When handling stained glass, the glass panels should be kept in a frame so that they keep their shape. The lead canes can be soft and corroded, so check them carefully before moving. For storing glass lampshades, put polythene foam on shelves to protect the edges. For cleaning, do not use commercial glass cleaner on leaded glass as the chemicals can damage the lead, putty, and the glass. Before cleaning a decorated glass panel, check that the colors will not come away by carefully rubbing an inconspicuous area with a small piece of damp cotton wool. If the color comes away, just revert to using a brush to dust the surface and only clean the undecorated side. If a panel is very dirty, use two to one mixture of water to alcohol on a cotton wool swab, then dry the surface with a microfiber cloth. Clean lampshades using damp microfiber cloth. If lampshades are very dirty, use the alcohol and water mixture mentioned earlier. And how to deal with damage? If you do have an accident, gather up any loose pieces, wrap them individually in tissue paper, and store them safely. A qualified glass or ceramics conservator might be able to help repair the damage. Caring for your wooden objects. Mold can grow on damp wood and often occurs in furniture in places like the back of drawers when placed against an outside wall. So place your furniture at least 25 millimeters away from an outside wall or an open window and always place it away from radiators to avoid the risk of cracking and drying out of joints. And remember, Sunlight can be damaging, so always place your object away from direct sunlight. Handling. Lift furniture to move. Never drag it. To lift a chair, place your hand under the seat or on the legs. And don't lift it by the back or arms. If you need to turn over a piece of furniture, do not pivot it on its legs, but lift it off the ground and turn it over gently and set it back down. Cleaning. Floor cleaning, vacuuming, polishing and mopping frequently damages the legs, feet and lower rungs of furniture. Move the lightweight furniture out of the way and clean by hand around the remaining heavier pieces. Lint and feather dusters can catch on raised veneers or surface cracks and can pull away pieces of wood. So if you're cleaning smooth, flat surfaces, use a lint-free hem duster such as a tea towel. For cleaning carved, gilded or lacquered wood, or surfaces that are already damaged, use a pony hair or synthetic soft brush that attracts the dust with static electricity rather than a duster. When waxing wood, always dust before waxing, and only wax furniture that already has a wax finish on it. Use beeswax polish in the colour nearest to the colour of the wood you already have. Don't wax too frequently, or the surface will dull. Apply the wax thinly and buff with a lint-free cloth. Avoid aerosol polishes or polishes with silicon in them as it can build up on the surface of your object and can be very hard to remove. Removing marks. Immediately wipe away any spilt liquid from the wooden surface to avoid any staining. And always use coasters under glasses, hot cups and plant pots to avoid marks. Caring for your ceramics. Display ceramics at the back of shelves, where playful cats or flapping curtains won't cause you heartache. Please don't use sprung plate holders on repaired objects, as the springs may pull the piece apart. For handling with care, don't trust handles on ceramics when moving them. Place one hand under the object and use your other hand to hold it securely at its side. For storage, protect your ceramics from dust by covering them with acid-free tissue hats or a polythene bag. If using the bag, don't seal it, just slide the bag over the object. When wrapping ceramics to move or ship, use plenty of tissue paper and preferably add a layer of jiffy or polyethylene foam. At the other end, unwrap ceramics at a padded topped table in case anything falls out from the packing. For cleaning and washing, Remember, regular dusting will save you the need for more extensive cleaning, which is when most accidents happen. 
Keep objects free from dust by brushing them with a hog's hair or a softer pony hair brush. For smooth surfaced objects such as jars and vases in good condition, they can be wiped with a dry microfiber cloth. Never wash repaired ceramics as the glued joints may come apart. Surface dirt on glazed objects can be removed with a cotton bud dampened with water containing just a few drops of conservation grade detergent. Rinse with a clean cotton wool bud dampened in clean water. Unglazed earthenware objects like terracotta and many archaeological or ethnographic wares should never be washed as water may cause staining. And finally, do not use domestic bleach for cleaning ceramics as it can cause damage over time. Caring for hanging textiles. Textiles and dyes are easily damaged by light, so try to avoid displaying them in bright artificial or sunlight. Avoid hanging textiles on an outside wall, as this may cause them to become damp or mouldy. Insects often attack wool or silk curtains, especially in the folds, so try to vacuum these areas at least once a month. And display your hanging textiles as far away from people as you possibly can as dust and soot from people can become embedded in the fibres. Displaying hanging textiles. To hang flat textiles, avoid stress damage by evenly supporting the entire width of the top using hook and loop Velcro tape. For curtains, place hooks or rings close to each other. Storage. Store small textiles in acid-free boxes. Padding out any creases or folds in the textiles with scrunched up acid-free tissue. Try not to pack the boxes too tightly. Larger objects should be rolled on acid-free tubes with a decoration or pile of the textile facing outwards and interlaying with tissue paper. When rolled, cover with a clean cotton dust sheet tied at each end and if possible, suspend the roll from a dowel on wall brackets. Cleaning instructions. A lot of damage can be caused by inappropriate washing, dry cleaning or vacuuming of historic textiles. Always ask a textile conservator for advice, especially if textiles are very old and delicate. If the textile is in a strong condition, vacuum both sides at least once a year. It may be easier to take down a hanging textile and place it flat on a dust sheet for vacuuming. Use a vacuum cleaner with a suction set to low and use a crevice head or flat upholstery hook tool covered with nylon net attached at one end. Hold the nozzle just above the textile surface rather than rubbing onto the surface. Caring for your upholstery. With use, fabric structures wear down unevenly. Stuffing, springs and webbing can give way, leaving the upholstery distorted. If using older furniture, use gently to prevent wear and tear. Cleaning. Vacuum occasionally using a clean, smooth vacuum attachment rather than a brush, as a brush may damage fragile textile fibres. Cover the nozzle with a net and avoid vacuuming up any small pieces that you may wish to reattach later. And remember to clean down the back, sides and underneath sofa and chair cushions to remove any insects that might be hiding away. If it doesn't cause damage, place a hand under the seat and press lightly with a vacuum head to vacuum. Basic repairs. Sewing up any loose braids or fringes before they have had a chance to unravel, fall off or become lost. Don't be tempted to use adhesives as a quick fix as this may discolour or become brittle and then cause damage to the surrounding area. Protect and survive. Cover the arms and backs of fragile upholstery with similar weighted fabric to protect from handling marks and wear and tear. And if you're going away for an extended period of time, you could cover the whole item with a cotton sheet to protect it from light or dust. Try to place your upholstery item away from sunlight, direct heat or damp corners and check your object regularly for any signs of insect attack or damage. Caring for your carpets. Avoid placing an antique or silk carpet where it can be walked on frequently or in a very light filled area. Where practical, Close curtains or blinds in the room when it's not being used. A good quality underlay will, can protect a carpet from somewhere and this can be essential when a floor is uneven. A rug on top of a fixed carpet will often move or ruck up, presenting a potential safety hazard. 
To avoid this rucking up, you can sew a patch of canvas onto the lower carpet, just smaller than the rug, when at home it might be easier to place some polyester wadding under the top carpet and then replace this every year. Do not hang or beat an antique carpet as it puts a lot of strain on the threads and can cause them to break. A carpet that has a lot of loose threads or is in a very poor condition, please use a net over the end of the vacuum nozzle or vacuum through a net screen. Storage. If an antique carpet has to be moved or stored, it should be rolled around a tube with the pile side outermost rather than folded. The larger the carpet, the bigger the diameter of the tube. Always roll in the pile direction. This should feel the smoothest. Cleaning and washing instructions. Too much cleaning will wear out a carpet. Use a suction vacuum cleaner rather than one with rotating brushes and always try to set on the lowest suction strength. Lift and drag the vacuum over the carpet, avoiding wearing back and forth actions. It helps occasionally to turn a small carpet over and pat the back with the flat of your hand to loosen any grit before vacuuming. Do not use steam cleaners or commercial carpet cleaners or cleaning material on antique carpets. If you feel that your carpet really needs a wash, contact a textile conservator for advice. Caring for your clothes. Make sure your precious items of clothing are cleaned before it is put away for storage. Moths and carpet beetle can be drawn to any bodily fluids or any food stains that might be remaining. Be aware that antique clothing can be ruined by inappropriate cleaning, so if unsure, seek advice from a textile conservator. Lace, linens and cottons can take on a patina over time, making them more ivory toned. Washing doesn't necessarily return clothes to their current expectations of bright white. Store clothes flat in acid-free boxes and enjoy them as they are. To best view lace, use a tray or a box as lace can become brittle over time. Storage. Hanging clothes can put strain on seams and fibres so it's safer to store delicate items flat and carefully folded in roomy acid-free boxes well padded with acid-free tissue. Fold clothing carefully using lengths of scrunched tissue paper to pad out any folds. Heavy items may have to be hung, so make sure that the hanger supports the full width of the shoulders, but it's not too wide. A hanger should be padded with polyester wadding covered with washed cotton. Make covers for hanging items out of washed sheeting or use cotton tapes to tie them closed. Keeping insects away. Keeping cupboards clean and dry to help reduce the risk of insect attack and mould is very important. These can leave holes or permanent stains in your clothes. Allow air to circulate and inspect clothes regularly, especially during the spring months through to early autumn. Freezing will kill most bugs, but textile needs to be strong and undecorated to be frozen safely. Gently fold or roll an infested garment with padding, seal in a sturdy plastic bag and place in your freezer for a couple of weeks. Make sure that you bring any frozen garments up to room temperature before unsealing the bag to avoid any condensation. Caring for books. Much of the pleasure of old books is reading them rather than storing them away. But dirt can be a major enemy. Always wash your hands before handling and avoid using cotton gloves. Clean, dry hands are the most effective tools for reading a book. For handling, please don't pull a book off the shelf by the top of its spine, as this may cause it to break. Instead, gently push back books on either side and pull the wanted book by firmly grasping its sides. Please use bookmarks rather than creasing corners of pages or inserting metal clips. Creasing pages will cause the paper to crack and paper clips can cause corrosion stains with time. Please set your books up straight. Store books upright on shelves, well supported, so that they don't slump and become distorted, which will eventually hurt the spines. Store oversized books flat on the shelf. Also, keep your books in dry, cool places where they are less susceptible to mold, mice, silverfish, woodworm, and light. 
for protecting books, loose spines and hard covers of old favorites can be held in place by tying tape around the book with unbleached cotton tape, positioning the knot at the book opening. Open books gently. Please don't force a book open flat unless it was bound specifically to do that. Otherwise, the spine will crack. Pull out maps, tables, and other oversized plates should be opened as little as possible. And if open, use the original folds to reintegrate it into the text block. For cleaning instructions, don't open dusty books. First, clean the edges of the pages to prevent the dust from migrating onto the pages and therefore staining them. Keep the book closed with the spine side against you and gently flick off the dust with a soft bristle brush moving from the spine to the foredge. Vacuum first if the dust is very thick. And if you're thinking about repairing books, sticky tape can be very damaging as the adhesive penetrates and stains both leather and paper. Keep the book parts in acid-free card or tied up with the tape and seek advice from a book conservator. Caring for stone. Immediately clean up red wine or oil spills as many types of stone are surprisingly porous and can stain very easily. Commercial cleaning products can etch and damage floors and worktops. I always use plates under pot plants and move around to avoid stone discoloration from soil salts. For protecting stone floors, value the humble doormat. It will remove a huge amount of scratchy grip from shoes. The brush type of doormat is very effective. Be sure to shake it out regularly. Leave sharp heels at the door and wear slippers on stone floors. Over time, heels can cause a great deal of damage to stone floors. Use runners or mats to protect floors in heavy traffic areas, such as at sinks or in hallways. Lift these rugs occasionally to check for trapped moisture or dirt. Rugs will also protect against spillages. For frost-proofing statues, protect garden statuary and bird baths in late autumn by wrapping in Tyvek sheeting secured with string, but be sure to ensure the stone is completely dry before covering. For cleaning instructions, sweep or vacuum floors regularly. This avoids the need to wet wash so frequently, which is a harsher method of cleaning the stone. Before washing, use a plastic spatula nothing stronger to scrape off any built-up dirt or food debris. Wash stone floors with tepid water containing a small amount of neutral detergent using a well-wrung-out soft sponge or string mop to minimize wetting. Replenish your wash water frequently during washing and finish with a clean rinse. Avoid commercial cleaning and scouring products. Caring for framed works of art on paper. Avoid touching your frames, particularly if they are gilded, as hands can leave greasy residues. Lift your artwork with the help of a card support underneath, avoiding unnecessary touching and possible edge damage. If the work is unframed, store your artwork flat in acid-free boxes or portfolios. Framing facts. Works of art on paper, including photographs, need to be surrounded by pH-neutral conservation-grade materials. Ordinary card, paper, and wood backing board 
contains acids that can discolor and embrittle the paper. Professional framers should ensure that the glazing doesn't touch the artwork as this can cause damage, especially if it is of charcoal, pastel, or a photograph. Choose glass rather than acrylic for art with charcoal and pastel as static from the acrylic will attract the particles. How to hang your artwork. Display your framed artworks on interior walls. Where possible, hang art in relatively dry and cool rooms to prevent mold growth and damage from moisture-loving insects like silverfish. Seal frames carefully to deter insects and avoid hanging work above a fireplace or a hot radiator. For cleaning instructions, cleaning paper requires the specialist skills and materials of a paper conservator. Much can go wrong even with techniques that appear to be straightforward, such as removing marks with a soft eraser. When cleaning the glazing on your framed works, apply a little water and alcohol to a clean flannel cloth first. Never spray the cleaning fluid onto the glazing. It will click quickly puddle on the bottom of the frame and may migrate behind the glazing, damaging both the matting and the work of art itself. Caring for silver. Tarnish is the enemy of silver exposed to air that contains sulfur pollutants. So you'll have to be prepared to keep the silver frames of your family photos polished regularly if you want to keep them on show. For handling, always wear gloves when handling your decorative silver, as fingerprints will mark the metal. Your favorite silver rings will stay bright through regular hand washing, and frequently worn bracelets and necklaces will need only a gentle polish to retain their sparkle. For storage, Carefully wrap your special occasion silver in acid-free tissue and store in plastic or metal containers. Check your jewelry box. Cardboard and wooden boxes are acidic, so they may accelerate tarnishing of your rare, rarely worn silver jewelry. If you wrap silver cutlery or jewelry in cloth, please use cotton rather than wool, as wool contains natural oils that can affect the silver. For cleaning, a soft brush, like a makeup brush, is safer than a cloth for dusting fragile or spiky silver objects. Cotton buds dampened in alcohol are invaluable for cleaning deposits of dirt in the crevices of a highly embellished item. For washing instructions, if an object is made entirely from silver, it's quite safe to wash it in warm soapy water, rinse clean, and wipe with a soft cloth. Never immerse any silver items that also include ivory or wooden handles. And the easiest and safest method of cleaning silver is to use silver foam on a soft sponge. Use good quality silver polish on objects that you cannot get wet. Caring for metal. Iron and steel will rust in damp, air forming orange and red corrosion that leads to pitting. Metal objects should be raised off the floor on a plinth to protect from dampness caused by mopping floors. Keep surfaces dust free as dust particles can absorb the air's moisture and start corrosion. Don't polish brass obsessively. An occasional rub will help prevent the buildup of tarnish. And avoid displaying brass objects over a fireplace or in a moist atmosphere, as this hastens corrosion and tarnishing. For handling, always wear gloves when handling iron and steel, as salt deposits from your skin can speed up rust formation. Cast iron is very brittle, and if dropped or set down too hard, it can easily break. For storage, keep iron objects dry. Do not leave them directly on a cement, stone, or ceramic floor but put them on a shelf, pallet, or battens to raise them up. Small objects can be stored wrapped in acid-free tissue in a sealed plastic box. Wrap brass in acid-free tissue and store in a plastic or metal container rather than cardboard box. Special corrosion inhibiting bags and rolls are available from conservation suppliers. For cleaning brass, microcrystalline wax is better than brass polish Apply to a clean surface with a soft brush 
and polish off with a lint-free cloth to give protection from tarnishing. Gently does it. Remove accumulated old polish by wrapping some fibers of cotton wool round the end of a cocktail stick and dampening it with alcohol or white spirit. Dust regularly with a soft brush or use a dry microfiber cloth on smooth objects. An object made purely from solid brass can be washed in warm water with a few drops of conservation grade detergent. Rinse in warm water and dry thoroughly with a soft cloth. This will remove accumulated dirt. Use a fine abrasive paste like Premlin on a cotton wool bud or swab to polish the brass as it's easier and more often effective than liquid brass polish. Buff with a small clean cloth or soft brush. For iron and steel, only clean if surfaces are smooth, unpainted, and either uncorroded or just lightly rusted. Clean off grime with cotton wool buds or soft cloth moistened with white spirit or alcohol. Remove light rust from iron and steel using fine abrasive paste on a cotton wool swab. Clean off the paste with white spirit. Use fine wire wool and white spirit to move severe rust, but do not use these abrasive methods if the surface is uneven, colored, or decorated. Protect the metal immediately after cleaning with microcrystalline wax or gun oil. For cast iron fire grate, they can be warmed up and brushed with blackening for the protection and an even black finish. And finally, stainless steel can be washed in warm soapy water, rinsed and dried well. Caring for leather. Leather is a sturdy material, but it is prone to damage from wear and tear, handling, water, or high humidity. Animals and insects particularly find leather tasty. If you're a fan of 19th century antique leather bound books, look out for powdery red rot caused by sulfur air pollution. And before trying to do any leather treatments, please contact a conservation specialist. For storage, pad gloves, shoes, bags, and hats with crumpled up acid-free tissue paper to support their shape. This is also the best way to dry out modern leather items if they're wet, but remember to replace the tissue as it becomes wet. Some old leathers are not as strong as they look and can easily tear or split, so please handle them carefully. Do not let leather become too dry as it will become brittle and avoid placing leather in direct sunlight or near a radiator. For cleaning, oils and dressings can often cause long-term damage, so keep leather clean by dusting with a soft brush. To improve the appearance of smooth leather, like on a suitcase, rub in a little beeswax furniture polish, not the cream style, using your finger or a soft cloth, then polish with a soft brush or cloth. Don't use modern cleaning products on old or vintage leather as they can damage or stain. Some leather can be marked or damaged by water, so do not wet clean leather, just dust it. And any remaining dirt may come off by wiping with a cotton wool swab, barely dampened with a little bit of white spirit. A dry chemical sponge, which looks a little bit like an eraser, lightly rubber rubbed over a dirty area or a dry microfiber cloth will also remove some of the dirt.